Oh well, here I am, back whether you want me or not. Just like herpes, bitch, and there ain't no ointment for this. I'm still currently in a hotel room because I am traveling for Pride stuff. It's still Pride when I'm filming this. I don't know if, I don't know if it's gonna be Pride when I post this video. <laughs> I don't care though, it's, it's Pride in my mind. So it's still Pride on this channel. I got a late start to the game. And today we're doing another highly requested bar rescue video because I posted a video reacting to one of the gay episodes in honor of Pride and everybody said I didn't give them the episode that you wanted. So today we're gonna be doing that. I told you if you like the video and comment that you want me to do it again, I will. I give into peer pressure very easily. <laughs> this episode is called Play Some Janet Jackson. Okay, <laughs> I'm down for this. I'm down for more of the queer content. And I'm gonna give you my unfiltered opinion, hard and raw, so I hope you're on prep. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want me to do more content like this. I'm sorry I don't have my fan to emphasize the gayness. I found a rainbow shirt. This is the this is the most rainbow shirt I own. I wish I had a black light. Just do a whole video with a glowing background. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'd be glowing as well. <laughs> like a very friendly ghost. Let's get into this episode. I hope we have more divas. Is there some Mariah? Some Whitney? I yet again have high expectations Bar Rescue, let's see what the fuck you got today. But first, a message from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by our friends over at Bespoke Post. This shop is a treasure trove of small brands you might not have heard of, and they're all committed to quality and craftsmanship. Many of these small businesses and products are located right here in the US, and new products go up on the site every week. And look at this! It's like Christmas. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. They sent me a smoking infusion kit. And y'all know I love infusion! You got the glass closed. I don't know if I'm saying that right. An oak smoking platform. Yep, that's oak. And a butane torch with an adjustable flame. I'm gonna use this for so many things. <laughs> this kit is gonna allow you to infuse not only cocktails, but also food with rich smoky flavor. All you have to do is set some wood chips right here on the base, light the chips with the torch until they start to smoke with this right on top of it. And in a few minutes, your cocktail will be infused with rich smoky flavor. As for the torch itself, just add a little butane. You can grab that from your local convenience store. Fire it up and get smoking. The good kind of smoking. This kit is gonna allow you to make smoky cocktails like a pro. From a smoky Manhattan or an old fashioned, it'll help you elevate any cocktail and help you add aromatic flavors to just about anything. I love how chic this looks. It's small and it won't take up a lot of space on my bar. And something as simple as this is gonna help me with my infusion videos to make amazing smoky cocktails that I haven't been able to do in the past because I mess up a lot, but thanks to this product, now I won't, okay? I could actually pretend like I know what I'm doing. This is gonna help me impress my friends. Imagine, imagine me just like, hold on, hold on. This would be my Beauty and the Beast rose. Walking up to somebody and serving a cocktail like this, are you kidding me? Picture it, use your imagination. This is full of whiskey. It's 11 in the morning, so I'm not gonna waste whiskey. Okay, that's a sin here on this channel. Imagine, you open this. It's full of whiskey, an amazing cocktail. Smoke and aromatic senses are flowing. And then you get to put this inside of you, and you don't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna call you back. You guys, you literally would put your cocktail right now, take your torch, set the wood chips on fire, and cover that. That was beautiful. And cover that up and let it sit while it's smoky and let it infuse. To get your own smoking and infusion kit, support the channel and support small businesses. Click the link in the description below or go to bespokepost.com slash MGTV. That's bespokepost.com slash MGTV for all this. Cause if you're gonna drink, do it right. This is for everyone, men, women, non-binary people. Everyone can enjoy this as long as you're of the legal drinking age. Unless you use it for like food or something. Thank you so much to Bespoke Post for helping to support this channel and small brands everywhere. I highly recommend them and their products. Now let's get back to the video. In 1993, Paul Sanfilippo bought 16 year old Gypsy, Las Vegas's first gay nightclub. There was a line out the door, it was just amazing. Another bar in Las Vegas that I have never heard of. <laughs> What's going on? Am I boring in Las Vegas? I only know about the garden and piranha. Locals, let me know in the comments. Am I missing out not going to these bars? Also, what is the bar called? Isn't that a slur? Is that a, hold on. I don't feel comfortable saying that. I'm literally Googling if I'm allowed to say that. I'm a white man in America. I'm Googling what I can and cannot say. <laughs> That's better than just assuming. Apparently it relies on the context, which doesn't help me at all. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna say a thing. Okay, this was on a network So I'm gonna watch the episode because y'all been saying it in the comments But I think I've referenced this word before and people educated me so I'm trying to be better So I'm gonna watch this video, but I'm not gonna say it. Am I okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know, I'm already anxiety already. People don't want to come in here because it's caught in some weird 90s time warp. Overwhelmed by insurmountable debt, Paul is spiraled out of control. Uh, cocktails are good. <laughs> So is cocaine, but what have we learned? We can't do that. <laughs> Just because things are good and fun doesn't mean that you should do them. Also, what's wrong with a 90s time loop? Why is that everybody hate 90s themed things? It's the decade that everyone just rips on all the time. I love the 90s. 50s, 60s, 70s themed things. Everyone loves. Why do we hate the 90s? Leading to a toxic work environment. Do I look like your mobile home trailer park? Or wait, wait. Or am I signing your paycheck? And when times get a little too tough... I would have been fired right then, right there. Being demeaned by my boss and using my paycheck as a threat. Suck my whole dick. That's why I created a YouTube channel so I could tell that to people. Suck my whole dick. The way employers treat their employees who need the work is I never, I never wanted to let that be me. That's why I did this. And I always stand up for people in those situations because that's terrible. This is also why I've gotten fired a lot. <laughs> Thank God I had something to fall back on because on it sucked my whole dick. Honestly, he'd probably like that though. Sniff an old muff. I don't know. I don't know. I, there's nothing wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I already don't like this man. <laughs> he would disappear for three or four days trying to hide from some of his problems. Don't disappear for a week. Come in and try and fix the problem. Okay. Why am I being red? <laughs> I do that here a lot. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with disappearing and then coming back once you fix the problem, but you have to have fixed the problem. I don't have employees though and people relying on me, okay? So it's a different story for you, sir. <laughs> Faced with an evaporating customer base and slapped with a $400,000 fine for failing to pay live entertainment taxes, Paul finds himself $2 million in debt. What did we learn from RuPaul? Pay your taxes. Pay your fucking taxes. I had to pay mine. To reality shows in one year. I had to pay like 30 grand in taxes. <laughs> if I can do it, you can. Okay, I'm a mess. Especially when it comes to a performance tax. That comes down to paying your workers. A queer establishment not paying queer workers is the worst. We have to deal with it from the rest of the world, okay? We don't need it from our own community. Pay your taxes. Pay your employees. Honestly, just get, give out money. <laughs> Take it. Unable to keep up with the times, Paul has agreed to kick open the doors, bust open the books, and make a call for help to Bar Rescue. I am the guru. This is like when Shane Dawson used to do his documentary to help other YouTubers before he became terrible. <laughs> well, he always was terrible. Before we all knew he was terrible. Helping people that can't keep up with the times stay in their job even though they're not good at it because that's part of the job. Have you learned nothing from Madonna? Las Vegas is the nation's third most popular destination for gay travelers who spend an average of $1,321 during their stay. $210 more than the average straight traveler. Boasting four- Because the gay gays have all the money. Thank you, unfair wage gap. Honestly, I'm gonna get in trouble. I should, it's wrong, okay? It's... <laughs> gay men, from a sales and marketing perspective, gay men, especially gay couples, spend more because we have more of an income because of an unfair wage gap between the genders, which is a construct. Why are we paying people different based on a construct? The first gay nightclub to ever open in Las Vegas. So it's got a very rich history. This place was on top. Opened in 1977. Okay, so it's verse. It was on top and now it's a bottom. Work. Best thing I heard about it so far. Grow up. <laughs> for the bar, John has called in brand ambassador for Tanqueray, Rachel Ford, the 2011 winner of the North American Angostura Cocktail Challenge. Rachel specializes in making fresh... I'll give a fuck about Rachel. Is she at least queer? Please tell me she is. I, I don't... Bring in a queer person to save queer bars. Get... Stop. A straight woman coming in to fix a gay bar. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. That might be wrong. But it bothers me. Everyone's welcome into the bar, of course. I want everybody in my queer bar. Queer bars are for everyone. But something about a straight woman telling me how to make a Cosmo in a gay night, I, I don't know why that makes my butthole pucker. <laughs> she looks fun though. She honestly looks like she knows what she's talking about. So maybe I should shut the fuck up. <laughs> her experience working in trendy hotspots in San Francisco and New York make her the ideal fit for Gypsy. It's not okay, she works in uh, New York and San Francisco. She 
She's got, she's some kind of gay. She's some kind of gay. Honestly, I don't even care if you are a straight woman. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. That was bad of me. Cause she's around us, okay? What, even if she's an ally, work, okay. As long as you're not patronizing like the woman in the last video. That's why I think I have a bad taste in my mouth. I'm defensive, I'm sorry. My experience has made me a bad person, okay? I'm trying to not make my trauma define me. <laughs> We have an amazing show lined up for you. Doesn't look so amazing to me. Doesn't. There's no lighting. They walk into the darkness. Place is empty. Long time ago, it was always. It was Not properly lighting your drag performers? I'm a phobic. Letting a drag queen not only have proper light, but walk into the darkness? That lighting director should be smacked. Look at Paul drinking that. Mm. Look at him. That's irresponsible. It's also stupid. He needs to get his priorities straight. So for this bar, I got two. Every gay bar owner that I've ever worked with was always drinking at the bar. Always, always. As long as they're not a problem, as long as they're not a detriment, setting the tone, for every, not only the workers, but everybody at the bar. We've seen this a lot on Bar Rescue. Working in a bar is tough, especially surrounded by vices to numb the pain and stress that you're going through, so I get it. But part of being a queer person is properly dealing with your trauma, and even if you don't, still being able to function in society. John brings in Daniel Fast and Joe Meyer, Las Vegas nightlife experts from Angel Management Group, which owns some of Vegas' hottest nightclubs. Are they gay? Are they gay? I don't want straight people coming into a gay bar and telling me how to fix a gay bar. I want people in the community being part of the history that know why it just should succeed and how it should Sometimes I get so bothered that my brain just shuts off. My mouth keeps moving, but my brain shuts off. Gets me in trouble a lot. Also allows me to give great oral. <laughs> well, gin martini. Gin martini. Pause, 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 pause. A gin martini in a plastic Dixie cup. I'm gonna say it, I'm just gonna say it. Electric chair. Burn it down, burn it down. I've seen all I need to see, I'm done. Any cocktail, any cocktail. Plastic is one thing, but a thin plastic Dixie cup? I shit my pants a little bit. A martini nonetheless. I mean, I hate martini glasses, but not, I hate that, I hate that's that, I, I'm sure it it's happening again. So that's the way they serve a martini in a plastic glass. The body heat from their hand holding that plastic, there's no insulation. You're going to have a warm glass of spirit. What do I always say? 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 Not only is it disgusting, you could prove why it sucks with science. We don't have any vermouth. A gin martini, a gin martini with no vermouth. You served them a gin martini. If you don't have vermouth, say that before you give them the cocktail. I mean, it's bad enough. It's bad enough that an establishment doesn't have vermouth. But to serve the drink without one of the main components of what they ordered. Not only was it served terrible, and is it already a bad experience, it's not made right. And there was no warning. If that was me, I, first of all, I'd apologize. Right when they ordered the drink, I would say, just gonna give you a heads up, these are the reasons why I don't recommend this. For this exact reason. But leave it to the gay bartenders to just give you a shitty product and then look at you hands on hips pissed. <laughs> I mean, that was me. But at least the cocktail I gave you was good. The only time plastic cups, in my opinion, are acceptable is when it's insane crowds like Pride, when glass is a health hazard. Because if anybody drops it or anything, it is in a crowd like that, it's dangerous. So if people order this and I can't give it to them properly, you make sure to let them know. I tried to order a martini, but they didn't even have vermouth. And if you don't have vermouth, you can't serve a martini. So the drink I got was basically straight gin. You want to try my whiskey sour? You give them a cup, a Dixie cup of warm gin, and then looked at them like, where's my tap? I can't even defend you. Brandon! 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 Why? I'd kill myself. I'd unalive, I'm sorry. I'd unalive myself. <laughs> I'm annoying. Okay, I'm annoying. And that's too annoying for me, bitch. Put some Janet Jackson on. I'm not putting Janet Jackson on, okay? <laughs> Up, Is that where the title of this episode came from? Is that what y'all wanted me to see? I don't even want to talk shit because I don't want to disrespect the queen. You need to stop yelling at me at the bar. Brandon! Why is he here anyway? Ah, uh, I... Smacks a drink at me? Physical fight. 
Physical fight, altercation. Lawsuit, violence, all things that will ensue if any of that ever, I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a shit if you're my boss. <laughs> I fight. This is why I needed to become my own boss. Like, there was no other option. <laughs> what the, oh, come here. Oh, you're kinda, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Man. Brandon! Disgusting happened to me all the time. Whether it's an employer, which is sexual harassment, but where the fuck is HR here? You know what I'm talking about? Or other customers, they just feel, I don't know what it is about gay bars, but people think they could just touch and grab you. When it's men, sexual harassment to a lot of people just doesn't fucking exist. And it's stupid and terrible. Put Janet on or you're fired. Put her on your self, you own the jukebox. Why is she such a nasty bitch? Because you made me this way. Bitter and angry. Every gay couple in the world. <laughs> this is right here. This is a happy gay relationship. Are they dating? Olivia, dude, what, what are you, what are you? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The reason why it's bothering me is because I'm empathizing, okay? I'm relating, this happens. All the time. Gay service industry workers get harassed all the fuck. They don't fucking touch me. Don't get me wrong, I'll get down. I'm a slut, but what I wanna be, okay? I'm a slut with consent. I might be a slut, but I'm also a person from New Jersey with anger management problems, okay? If you make your employees uncomfortable and degrade them, you'll never be successful. Is this normal? That's actually our, the owner. Dude. Okay. <laughs> so we just came on the right night. Yeah, it's good. Perfect. You just come on the right night. That probably happens every fucking night. This is something that these people have to deal with because a lot of workers in this situation don't have other options. So that's also entrapment. It's wrong on so many levels. I'm trying not to scream because I'm in a hotel room, okay? People are trying to sleep. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to scream in this video. This is gonna be so difficult. <laughs> I'm just gonna get up and walk. Every time I wanna scream, I'm gonna get up and walk away. I'm gonna get so much exercise during this fucking video. Stop yelling. Oh. Three seconds later. Three seconds later, and we get a tornado. You know what? You guys should be fired. Fill my drink. No, no. Chino, you're a manager. Here's the thing. <laughs> because bar owners have said that to me so many times, because I fight. I was never fired for being a bad bartender. I was always fired because I was an asshole back to the boss. You guys should be fired. I'd be like, okay, then fire me. Even before I had like something to fall back on, my fucking arrogant ass was always like, fire me. Do it, bitch. I'd always call the bluff, always. I got fired from the Abbey like eight fucking times. <laughs> Sometimes I've had bar owners that were so fucked up during the shift that they didn't even remember firing me. So this is an accurate portrayal of some establishments. In any other bar, someone acting like that would be removed. Livio, dude, give me a lap dance. I fucking can't, I'm gonna, <laughs> I need a pillow to scream in for when I am gonna lose my mind. Okay. Most of the time it's the bar owner acting this way because he knows that no one can do anything about it, which is infuriating to me. When he comes in, he's all pissed off. Ooh, I'm scared, but you know what? Dude, he's here. <laughs> I like how these people try to be so big, ballsy. And first of all, you called him for help, sir. You call, you're the one who put your fucking bar in to be help. He comes in big and bad. He's got, he said got success. You should be scared. Cause in the end, you lose. Are you losing $15,000 a month? Here? Yes. You think you're gonna turn that around, cursing at your employees? I think they deserved it. They deserved it. Yeah. I say nobody deserves your- This is insecurity and projecting. This is somebody with such lacks of self-confidence that sees themselves as such a failure that they have no other way to make themselves feel better about themselves than to abuse everybody around them in order to make themselves feel superior somehow. So it's tragic and infuriating at the same time. Why should they like it when you talk to them that way? If I do that, I'm a aren't I? Right? Yes. So if you do it, aren't you a Weak pussy bitch. At least fight back. I don't know why I want him to fight back because I would scream if he did, but I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Coming from somebody that's been on a reality show, if you can't handle your liquor, don't drunk because you gotta stay ready to fight. I'm better fighting when I'm drunk. I say things that hurt <laughs> that I regret the next day. You're not fit for TV. You're not fit for this bar. Take off that suit. <laughs> Treat people like people. You don't talk to people like that. And, and my employees, they deserved it. Fill my drink. Oh, Bitch. Don't talk to me that way. They deserve weak pussy bitch. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh god, send me in. <laughs> send me in, coach. I'm ready. Dude, well, give me my drink. Well, behave. Give me my drink. No, no, I think he's a drunk. 
I want some more Janet Jackson. I'd like to see you sober. What is his obsession with Janet Jackson? We're 11 and 57 seconds into this episode and we've asked for Janet Jackson like 22 times. I get it, love her, she's great, but out of all the divas, Janet Jackson. I want you to get the employees angrier and you're only gonna make your dick worse. I'm thirsty. See, I want him to leave. I want him to leave and just to go fuck yourself and watch him fail. That's my favorite thing to do, is watch people I don't like let make themselves implode. <laughs> I don't need to do anything. You're gonna destroy yourself and it's gonna be so sweet to watch you do it. But it's not just him that loses everything. It's all his employees who, if, if they could be somewhere else, I'm sure they would. I don't think people would be at a place like this because they had other options. So for all their sakes, I hope this gets its shit together. For him, I hope fire. Get him the hell out of here. When he's sober, I'll come back here tomorrow and fix this bar for you guys. Get in the cab and go home, jerk. Okay, give me a break. I'll go home tomorrow. I hope the Uber home can play Janet Jackson. <laughs> you guys suck. You should be fired. Hey, trust me, I, I, worked. I know what I'm doing. You can't even speak! You can't even form a sentence! Coming some from somebody who has a lot of issues and a history of substance abuse, sir, I'm still able to at least put a sentence together. What's going on? And you're running a business, talking like a big shot until someone gets in your face. Oh God, kick him, hit him. Violence, I'm, I'm promoting and accepting violence today on this day. I think when John gets to know me better, he <laughs> can learn something from me. And then John and I are gonna party so he can tell me, oh my God, Paul, you were so right and now I'm so wrong. Okay, just because you want me to go with you to the bathroom stall real quick doesn't mean I'm gonna be your friend. I mean, I'll go with you, but I'm not gonna like you no matter what. <laughs> but I'm really feeling calm today. I'm in a patient mood. I'm hoping Paul comes in sober and I can use my current mellow attitude and start to actually go to work, not scream and yell all freaking day. So John found poppers. <laughs> nice to meet you sober. It, 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 I'm sort of surprised you made it here today. Cause you know I've been doing this a long time, right? Yes. I mean, watching you last night was pretty heavy. Yes. I mean, you honestly, I'm gonna give my guy, I'm gonna give this dude <laughs> like the first compliment. The fact that he's there, that fresh face after the shit show last night, like it's impressive, but also extremely concerning because that is an alcoholic, okay? And I'm not even gonna joke about that. Is that the first time it's ever happened? Um, Be honest with me. No. How much are you in the hole right now? Um, right now about $2 million in debt. $2 million. Do you think there's any chance that you Okay, so that's where it's, okay, $2 million in debt? I'd be an asshole too, but I would be self-destructive taking it out on myself. In this case, you're projecting all your terrible things going on in your life on everybody around you. And that's where the drinking is coming from. Mama, get yourself together. Before you can get everything else together, you gotta go take care of yourself because you're only gonna make your situation worse. Once you fall that deep in a hole, you fall into despair where there's no hope. So you just kind of like lean in and like s submit Further and further and further into the darkness. Oh, damn it. Now I want you to be better. Now you got me rooting for you. Damn it. People, when they get depressed, they, 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 they tend to medicate. Fill my drink. No. I want to help you, but I want to make you help yourself. All drinks aside, all drinks aside. That's why some of us leave sometimes to take care of themselves before they continue a... An endeavor. You gotta take care of yourself mentally so that you can take care of yourself physically in order to fix everything else around you. Step by step, one at a time. If you are drunk while I'm here, I walk out. Okay, deal. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to that. I, I give you my word. I don't believe it's gonna be able to happen. And that's not me making a joke. I just don't believe, I don't believe. That's just like that. <laughs> like Carrie Bradshaw, just like that. <laughs> I don't believe it. If I was John, I would sit here and say, if you check yourself into a rehab facility now, I will save this bar so that when you come back, everything will be better. I think that's, because this the problem is him. The problem isn't necessarily the bar that much, it is him. So even if they fix the bar and he doesn't drink for, what, two, three days, which is like a feat for him at this point, it's not gonna solve the problem. It's gonna put a Band-Aid on it. He was disrespectful, arrogant, called you worthless. You're not, are you? No. Why would you say that? Unfortunately, and so it's, it's, I feel better if you look serious rather than yes. smile, to be honest okay. with you, Paul. Okay. I was serious to you last week. He's nervous. He's nervous. That's why he's smiling and giggling. I do the same thing. When I'm nervous and scared, I smile and giggle, and people think I'm being disrespectful, but I'm not. I'm just nervous. I believe he's, he's sorry that he did it, but I'm not convinced that it won't happen again. Brandon, how'd that make you feel last night? Um, I was a little mortified. 
tell him what you feel and tell him what he needs to know. I've worked for you the longest, and for me it's the- Yes, bitch, perform. Give me those tears. Give me the drama. Perform. This is what I'm talking about. I'm, I love the queer community. Y'all stay ready. Y'all stay ready to give that emotion and be vulnerable. Live. I really don't believe that he is apologetic because it's like Jekyll and Hyde. He'll just go back to drinking. Paul, I want to see that old Paul that I used to know 12 years ago to have that drive, that determination. I just want you to go back to taking care of business. These queens showing up, not only to, for, they know where they're being filmed. This is going to be on TV. Obama, it's a gig. I'm going to show up in face. During the day, early in the day, live fucking professionals in full geesh. Does that look clean, sanitary? This towel is touching all of your glasses. The bar was absolutely disgusting. I mean, it had bacterial slime. No one is doing side work. No one is doing side work and there's no cleaning staff, which I say this all the time, there should be a cleaning staff every day, which is why you need to focus on bringing in profit in order to do that. Did you guys check this? Unfortunately, that's not no, because of everything will happen. Everything will no, happen. no, 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 this is not one night's dirt. You know that. So Absolutely not. First of all, you would be on your best behavior last night. You know for the first night you're being filmed, and you're going to use drama as an excuse to make sure things aren't done? Absolutely not. That's when you're on your game. The managers are just as much as fault here, because the managers need to approve your side work before you can leave every night at an appropriate bar. So it's not just the bartender's fault. Everyone here is wrong. Paul, this is why you're failing. I put my trust in the management that they're going to carry this the most simple stuff done and it, and it doesn't get done this bar has it doesn't get no 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 pause pause everybody shut up shut up shut up shut up it doesn't get done because look at the tone and precedent you set for the rest of your employees they're not getting anything done and they're still milestones better than you sir so last night we made a gin martini into a mockery we don't have any vermouth we're not doing that anymore i'm going to teach you how to make a classic london dry martini honestly if she just hasn't put vermouth in it and in a nice glass and chill the glass with an olive. Blue cheese, preferably. I'm gonna scream. <laughs> Cause that's like the most basic thing in the world. Why do you need somebody to come in and tell you that? These people have been working there for five years plus. I think they know how to make a gin martini. Just give them the material. Add our vermouth. Vermouth makes all the difference. Roll that around. Get the essence on the ice. I'm gonna strain it off. Now we add our Tangeray London Dry Gin. We're going to add an ounce and a quarter. Give it a nice stir. Garnish it with a fresh cut lemon twist. You can see the oils expressed. There you have it. This is our new London Dry Martini. Beautiful. I think our tip will definitely. It was great. It was, it's perfect. It's v extremely basic. I didn't know the little tip about, you know, putting the vermouth in first, swirling it around on the ice to give it the essence. Didn't know that. Honestly, I'm not gonna correct her because what the fuck do I know about martinis? I fucking hate making them. But there's nothing really special about that. So like, where is the significance that we always put on signature cocktails? Are we just like putting that aside right now <laughs> to teach them how to make a basic fucking gin martini? Interlock your inner arms, add the Crown Royal, and add our lemon juice. I, I get that this is a team building exercise, but never in the history of ever would this ever happen for a bar. Like, no. <laughs> I get building teamwork, I get it, but this is not bartending. This is like, this is a bartender's nightmare. Bartenders don't even like sharing a well, let alone building a cocktail together. Shake as a team, perfect. <laughs> Garnish it with a freshly cut lemon wedge. It ain't the first time they had to perform that motion as a team. Girl, I know gay bartenders that work together, Let's play together. <laughs> That's how I got on Low Hand Beach Club. How much fun did you guys have making that cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to show your guests. Okay, so we're just lying. <laughs> Didn't have fun at all. What is this, kindergarten class? I feel like I, like the kindergarten teacher that's covered in rainbows and all these bright colors with that crazy smile, he's teaching me how to make a fucking cocktail right now. It's giving me, it's, it's giving me an itch. <laughs> that's the only way I can ex express myself. They're gonna get behind the bar first, and I want you to watch them in the beginning. I can out cocktail anybody on the floor. And I, I can even perform better than some of those drag queens. Just saying. Let's go to it, thanks. I didn't come here to make friends. I came here to win. <laughs> you better work. I want her on other shows. My biggest weakness behind the bar would be Brandon. He's got the coarse attitude. I'm so tired right now. All right, you ready to open this place up? We are. I will say that sometimes the best gay bartenders are the worst because they get the worst attitudes. And that's okay. That is so, that's me. Like Mike's our best bartender. Um, he's also a cunt. <laughs> the service bar 
was terrible. It was hard to get to. There were people walking in it. There needs to be a clearly defined area for a service bar. A service bar is a dedicated production area, inaccessible to customers, to be used only by bartenders or waitstaff. This separation prevents congestion at the main bar. It's also a privilege that a lot of people don't have, so I'm jealous of it. Most places I've worked, it was always stressful because not only did you have to take care of the entire bar, you also had to work the service well. So imagine having to do a million tickets for tables and people sitting, and also make sure you cover the entire bar. It's fucking stressful, it makes it nearly impossible, so having somebody there dedicated to just work the service well is such a big help, you have no idea. Those boys are cute and everything, but um, we could rock it a lot more than they can. Justin, Brandon, good behind the bar. I'm gonna... Just because you could suck dick for a tip bit, don't say that you could be better. You're a little bit arrogant. <laughs> I love you. I love you for it. I love it. I hope you fucking put your money where your mouth is, bitch. I want you to succeed. I don't think you're gonna, but I want you to. I can't keep up with all these people. I don't know what these are supposed to taste like because I didn't taste them. You shouldn't have to taste the cocktail to know what it tastes like, okay? You should already know what you're making is gonna taste like. You've probably made those a million times. Also, just sitting there and being like, I can't keep, stop talking and work. Also, were those professionals they brought in straight people? I'm so anti-straight in this video. I don't know why. <laughs> I just don't like straight people coming into a queer establishment and trying to show them how to do it the pro- I just- Something about that rubs me the wrong way! Am I wrong? Brandon and Justin were detrimental to the customers and the business. They were struggling. It's hard working with Brandon back there. They also probably haven't worked with a crowd like this in a very long time. So they're learning how to work in a fast-paced environment again. They're used to working for like three people in the whole bar. So they've gotten rusty. If they used to be able to do this, I don't even know if they've ever been able to do this. When it was time for Livio and Jerry to step behind the bar, they really stepped into kind of a chaotic environment. And I was amazed at how they handled it. Livio made the drink and it's amazing. These two other queer bartenders I'm very impressed with. They're fast, I like the way they're pouring, double-handed, everything looks like it's moving at a proper speed. I'm impressed! The other pair, we just had one that was too inexperienced and a person that's probably become so arrogant and cocky because he thinks he's so good that it's being detrimental to his bartending ability. That's what we have going on there. Let's face it, it wasn't exactly a challenge to stay sober and treat people with dignity, but he did it! So it's a step forward. It is a challenge for some. I need a mirror in this place because I need to look at myself when I say that. <laughs> the show stinks. The performers are good, but let's face it. As soon as the show started, the bar stopped. I was a... <laughs> I was about to say, this show's great, and then I was like, whoa. But I like that he came back and was like, no, the, the drag queens are great. Just everybody stopped going to the bar. But normally the drag promoters promote the bar, making sure people are constantly flowing back and forth. There should also be table service going on. Okay, that, that well that we were talking about, that was for all the customers that are sitting down, should be crazy right now. There was no host. There needs to be a drag host that's emceeing to make sure that there's still a flow. Also, how long is the drag show? That's why you split it up. Do a number, let people grab a drink. Do a number, let people grab a drink. Jerry and Livio are amazing bartenders. Um, I hired them a long time ago, so it's a big compliment to me. <laughs> B team is. You might just be aging out, sweetie. Coming from somebody who has aged out, we you might be aging out, sweetie. It's hard to hear, but we need to say it sometimes. You have become the old arrogant gay that thinks you're better than the younger gays that can pull their weight just as good, okay? There's room for everybody. Arrogance is one of the leading causes of delusion, all right? Got to create a service bar for you, Paul, that doesn't slow down the customer bar every time a server walks up to the bar, guys, right? Now I wanna talk about the drag show for It's very easy to do that. E even if you don't have a separate bar that's the service bar, just have a certain station, have a, have a service well on the corner so that it doesn't interrupt the flow. So you have the two wells that take care of the crowd and then the one service well that's out of their way. So the drag show as we know it is dead. I can't say that I agree with him. We've been following the same format, or at least I have, for 20 years. How's it going? How's it going? Okay. Is the name Gypsy serving you well? Oh, no. You know, um, I'm... I'm, I'm it's, it's such a... Is this... 
Are we circling back to the conversation we had at the beginning of the video? Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Learn and grow, okay? The Sands was a great hotel, wasn't it? Legendary. Where is it? Gone. Buried. What happened to the frontier? It was imploded. How about the stardust? Same, same. Should I keep going? You have to grow with the times. You can't live in the past, okay? You gotta grow with the future in order to succeed. It's very easy to bitch and complain, okay? I wish I could sit here doing a fucking tag video. Like, my favorite color is blue. My favorite animal? Puppies. I wish the norm on YouTube was to make a five minute long video, okay? My life would be a lot easier, but life ain't like that. You know, unfortunately, there's still a lot of stuff in the short time you've been able to spend with us that you haven't had a chance to see. And one of my largest concerns is Brandon, who unfortunately, you know, you've seen the good side of him, but he's extremely rude to people. I mean, it wouldn't, he's at a very, very short fuse. I mean, stories. Really? Yes. yes. Well, I'm not seeing the real Brandon. <laughs> no, no, not at all. The, the customers. Should I be wet? You rad? You deal with that on your, then be a, then be a boss and fire him if it's a problem. But going behind his back to just. You little, you little bitch. You li he's a rat. That's why I don't like him. I, I knew, he's a rat. He's a, he's a snake. Like I'm not saying if this person's a bad bartender, don't fire them, but going about it this way, oh, you little cunt. Since you've been here, he's like this, this, this angel. Let me tell you how I feel. Brandon's been working hard. Maybe he's turning over a new leaf. Let's see how he does it. Relaunch and re. First of all, I love Brandon because of his. This. This. Oh, where's my pillow? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm mad. Oh, that got me. This is so. You little bitch. You little fucking bitch. If Brandon doesn't get fired and he saw this, I hope he fucking leaves. You fucking little bitch. Oh God, you're the worst. When I got here the first night, we got off to a bumpy start. We did. You're in that two million dollars. That's a lot of money. So I took it seriously. Look at his fucking face. I'm sorry, I can't right now. I'm trying so hard not to be loud because I have people staying in this place. But this one wants to talk about being fake. I don't believe that you've fixed your issues yet. Projecting, bringing someone else down to make you seem like you're doing better. Fucking little bitch. You got some balls on you. Fucking, oh, oh, mm, mm. I'm getting, so, I'm getting so mad. I'm so mad. What is it? I'm bringing up stand next to you. You know, like I said, I just want to tell everybody, you know, you guys are amazing. But one thing that I've been very upset with this week is Brandon. You know, there's been a lot of issues with you. It's Drama. We have never had this much drama on a Bar Rescue episode, and I want to give it to the gays. The drama, the cumflama. This bitch is about to fucking pull a stunt. Being rude, you're very short with the customers. You should not be a part of the new company. I need to let you go. I'm very sorry. Let's go. Okay. To be kidding. I can be a bitch, but I was willing to put that that branding behind me. But he he was so emotional at the beginning of this episode. He sh it's because he put him in his. Pl I need a second. I need a second. I just. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, so what? Now that you think your bar is big and fixed, you're gonna get rid of somebody that's stuck around because you don't like their attitude? What are you, bitch? Brandon, put. It Janet on or you're fired. Put her on your damn self. You own the jude box. It wasn't fair what you did to me, Paul. Treating, hold on, oh my God, pause, pause, pause. <laughs> Treating an employee like that and then wondering why he's being so di I think I'm taking this personally because I've been Brandon. I'm having Lohan Beach Club fucking flashbacks right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, the old Gypsy sign was horrible. This is all sign looks great. Sign looks great, lighting looks great, color looks great. I'm sorry, I'm in a bad mood now. Night and day. Night and d that's a transformation. Oh, oh my god. I just wish it wasn't for this owner. I just <laughs> it's amazing. It's horrible. It's, it, it's absolutely horrible. It, it is what it is. So, you know, it, it's. it's
right? <laughs> Paul wasn't ready for real change and embracing his future. Instead, he fell into his old ways and disappeared. But I have a staff that's excited and we're gonna launch it anyway. Welcome to 1950s. Please get rid of him. Please get rid of him and bring Brandon, bring Brandon back. Please, 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 please. That man, that man is the worst man ever. Like, all around. Paul, I know he's a difficult person. He has this whole spiel of he's changing, he's he's going to be a positive person, but he's always stuck in his ways. This is the look. Meanwhile, he's going behind other people's backs to talk shit. Fuck! What do you think of the place? Gorgeous. I like it. Beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. Can't wait to work that platform. Yeah. I love these drag queens. They are, I mean, they're a little bit, like, outdated with their mental opinion on how shows should be run, but look-wise and performance and skill-wise, they got it fucking down. I mean, everything seems like it's working. I'm so happy with the changes that were made. I hope that guy's gone. I hope he's gone. I don't know what happened with Paul, but I know what to do. So with him or without him, I know I couldn't pull it off. Give it to him. Let him be the let him be the owner. Please, please. This place has so much potential now. And everyone can succeed. And then the other guy's gone and he loses. Win-win. But only time will tell how this lounge does when Paul comes back. I hope he doesn't come back. Look how it's succeeding without the toxic component missing. Paul resurfaced two days after the relaunch and closed SBLV's doors. Excuse me? Three months later, SBLV remains closed. I'm gonna fucking freak out. Neither Paul nor his $2 million debt have been changed. Promotional consideration provided by- So that's, that's how it ends? You're kidding me. No, no, I refuse. I refuse, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. I ref I didn't sit here. I didn't sit here. But the, no. What happened to SBLV? I'm going to Google right now. Unfortunately, Paul passed away in April 2022. Shit. The bar is still permanently closed. It was also bulldozed in 2020. What? There literally is just a picture of a vacant lot. But there's hopes of rebuilding it in a new look. <laughs> I might cry. I, I'm emotion. He ruined everything. I mean, R.I.P. Prayers, sorrows. But what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What do you say after that? What do you guys think? I, I'm so excited to read the comments of this video so I can hear your thoughts. This was a ride, and not the kind of ride that gays like. Like this was awful. This was to everything was. Oh my god. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future ones. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesday, Thursday, sometimes late, just like your mom. Jesus Christ. Trying to reel it in. Okay, trying to bring it back. Okay, <laughs> bring it back. Special shout out to the regulars and barflies who help support this channel and make it all possible. Don't forget, if you're a Patreon member, I'm switching it over to memberships on this channel. There's the patrons tier where you get loyalty badges, special emojis, and priority commenting to be featured in these videos and for me to react with you more. The regulars tier where you get member shout outs at the end of all of my videos, photos and status updates, and access to member exclusive polls to help me come up with new video ideas. And finally, a barfly tier that gives you everything previously mentioned, plus access to special live streams that will be right here on this YouTube channel. Jesus Christ, I still can't, I'm trying to get through this. I'm like emotionally drained. Special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out to my videos, be sure to retweet this when this comes out. Oh my God. And that's it guys. <laughs> My name is Michael GTV, you fuck.